Believe it or not, this is an act of love. Trust me. If you think us humans have a hard time finding the right one, just, just stick around for a second and I'll show you. That was a scorpion fly, and they're called scorpion flies because... Yeah. To impress a female scorpion flies, males must present their female with a dead insect. Kind of like the equivalent to a boat trip in Miami because the bigger the bug, the higher the chances are that she will accept you. But here's where it gets weird because male scorpion flies aren't the greatest hunters, so sometimes they have to get creative. A male will mimic a female scorpion fly's behaviors around other males that have already captured their prey, word for word, bar for bar. Then steal their prey and present it to a real female. So like I said, male scorpion flies, they got it rough. As always guys, peace and love, baby. What animal is this? We got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. This is a ribbon worm. What you're seeing in this video is a muscle they have inside of their bodies called a proboscis. They eject their proboscis outside of their body to either catch prey or deter predators. There's over 1,000 different species of ribbon worms. Some species have a spiky proboscis, some have a tubular one, and some may even be toxic. So be careful. But on top of their obnoxious eating methods, they may just be the largest animal on the planet. Reports show that some species of these marine worms can grow to 150 feet long. But weird enough, they're only like an inch wide. So do with this information what you may. And as always, guys, peace and love, baby. I promise you, it's even worse than what you think. This is a spider wasp, and I promise you're, you're not going to believe what I have to say in we got to talk about it. So what this wasp is most likely doing to his eight-legged friend is probably dragging it to its torture chamber. They first hunt down spiders and then paralyze them with their venomous bite. Eventually the spider, though still alive, becomes motionless. That's when the wasp will begin to drag the spider into its home. But for dramatic purposes, we're going to call it a torture chamber today. And here is where it gets crazy. Once in that chamber the wasp will lay one single egg on the top of that spider's abdomen that egg will eventually hatch and then begin to eat the spider's insides from there the baby wasp will go on to live a normal life of hunting spiders and i guess that's just the way life goes in the wild this is terrifying you know sometimes love can be terrifying and we gotta talk about it we gotta talk about it. What we're looking at here is two leopard slugs mating. Once it's time for lovemaking, two slugs will find a high point like a tree or a fence or whatever. Next, they lower themselves from that high point with a tether they create with their mucus. Then they begin intertwining. And that is what we call in the animal kingdom, love. And as always, <laughs> peace and love, baby. I found these in the Cambodian jungle. Does anybody know? what they are so what we're looking at here are woolly aphids this is what one looks like and this makes me itch these little pests feed on sap from plants they have a long pointy mouth that helps them extract that sap from the plants though they are considered pests they play an important role in the ecosystem all kinds of animals feed on them like birds small mammals ants and other insects. Now, some species have this weird relationship with ants that's very beneficial. Ants will protect and farm aphids while moving from plant to plant. Aphids produce sweet honeydew that ants love to eat. So it sounds like a pretty fair trade to me. So they may be a little pesty, but they are vital to our ecosystem. But that's all we got for today. And as always, man, peace and love, baby. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. is when I woke up to one of you tagging me in this. Now, do I know what this is? Yes, it's a weevil, but at the same time, I have no idea what this is. Just, just stick with me. These are beetles. Weevils belong to a super family of beetles called Curculonidae. They're known for having very long snouts. Remember I said this first picture was a weevil, but I didn't know what it is 
because there's 97,000 different species of weevils like this giraffe weevil now just think about the fact that this is a subspecies of beetles which led me to wonder how many species of beetles are there there are anywhere from 350,000 to 400,000 different species of beetles mind you there are only 1.5 million different animal species on this planet which means that beetles make up 25 percent of all species on this planet so like i said before as much as i may know what this is i have no idea what that is and as always guys peace and love baby this is just a stick bug i know it looks like a butterfly mated with a scorpion and then got spit on by a cricket or something but it's it's just a stick bug and of course it's from australia these insects are known for their extreme camouflage abilities and you know like in the beginning of this video that reverse twerking they're completely harmless but use this movement as a defense mechanism because they don't have any true way to defend themselves so yes this bug does look crazy but no it does not go on my nothing to play with list and as always guys peace and love baby Oh yeah, we gotta talk about it. It is gonna be a quick one, but we gotta talk about it. This is the largest aquatic insect in the world. Let me introduce you to the giant Chinese Dobson fly. They call them giant for obvious reasons. Though they only grow to about four and a half inches tall, they have an eight inch wingspan and they do pack a painful bite. These insects can really only be found in Southern China and Northern Vietnam. Let me be clear. These insects are non-aggressive. If you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. Man, I know we talked about it yesterday, but it feels good to be back, man. As always, guys, peace and love, baby. This worm could potentially be the biggest threat to our ecosystem. So if you see one, exterminate it immediately. This is a hammerhead worm, and we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. For the record, hammerhead worms are invasive, toxic, extremely bad for our ecosystem and kind of immortal these worms are native to south asia but now have a worldwide distribution thanks to one thing exotic plant trading yeah like i said they're toxic to touch so don't touch them you won't pass away but your skin will at least be irritated the reason why they're so bad for our ecosystem is because their favorite meal is earthworms and earthworms are much more vital to the balance of our ecosystem than you think we got to talk about it we got to talk about it this is a japanese giant hornet and they go straight on my nothing to play with list not only are they the largest species of hornet they're also venomous Though their diet mainly consists of insects and honey, they also enjoy eating small mammals like rodents. They're known for their extremely aggressive behavior and potent venom, which can be severely painful and in some cases, even fatal to humans. And that's why these hornets go straight on my nothing to play with list. And as always guys, peace and love, baby. So what we're looking at here is an Asian bombardier beetle. They're named bombardier for good reasoning. When threatened, these beetles basically make a bomb created by the acid that they make inside of themselves. It's a weird process that you probably wouldn't be interested in. You guessed it, I'm gonna tell you anyways. The bombardier has two separate glands in its abdomen that hold two different substances. One holds hydroquinone while the other one holds hydrogen peroxide. I don't know why it's so hard to say that. Now when the beetle feels threatened, it activates its defense mechanism. The beetle will release both substances into a mixing chamber they call a reactor. The two substances cause an extreme reaction, raising the temperature of that mixture just to boiling point, which causes a lot of pressure in that chamber. The pressure, <laughs> this picture is crazy. The pressure causes that mixture to shoot out of a hole in the beetle's abdomen. That hole is called a turret. Once that mixture reaches the turret, it sprays out stunning or blinding 
whatever's bothering them. So these beetles go straight on my nothing to play with list. Cause if I saw someone walking around with a pot of boiling hot fabuloso, I would be on the other side of the street. Side note, sometimes I forget that us humans name the body parts of these animals until you run into a hole on a beetle's abdomen called a turret. And that's it for today, guys. And as always, peace and love, baby. How could something so little be so destructive? Let me introduce you to the bull ant. 90% bull, 10 <laughs> Okay, I'm being dramatic, but I do have a point here. Not really. I just want to rant about how obnoxious these guys are. This might not sound huge, but considering they're ants, they can grow to like an inch and a half, which is pretty, pretty... A Never mind. These ants, just like all other ants, can lift about 15 times their weight and withstand extreme pressure, so one step might not do the job. You know exactly where they can be found. You guessed it, Australia. Bull ants are extremely aggressive, they're known for hunting larger animals, and they have no problem biting humans. Plus, they're venomous, and their venom is potent. If you just so happen to be allergic to their venom, you could die in like... 15 minutes but in all honesty i just wanted to rant about these crazy ants and as always man peace and love baby leeches already make me itch but did you know leeches have 32 brains like no joke 32 brains the question would be why would these blood sucking leeches have 32 brains well it's kind of my job so here we go leeches internal structure is divided into 32 different segments which each have a brain so they don't exactly have 32 different brains, it's like 32 of the same brain. They're just spread out into 32 different sections, which makes it not as cool as it sounds. Leeches also have 10 stomachs, 10 eyes, 300 teeth, and nine pairs of pairs, you know, counterparts, huevos. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. And as always, man, peace and love, baby. Yeah, let's talk about it. Their name sounds just as weird as they look, the Cretinotus gangus. They're part of the moth family and usually look like this. But when males are preparing to mate, they have four scent glands that inflate like a balloon. They use them to send out pheromones to attract a mate. And the hairs are supposed to guide them in the right direction. In other words, these males have created a cologne system just to boost their numbers up. The things we do for love. And as always, guys, peace and love, baby.